Hello and welcome to another episode of the Aphantasia Experiments podcast and uh, Psychic School. Still haven't sure, I'm still not sure if I've let go of that podcast yet. So if you're listening to the Psychic School podcast, come on over to Aphantasia Experiments because I likely will put everything into that podcast and it's not always going to be about Aphantasia. Spoiler alert, Aphantasia has led me to a rabbit hole of self-discovery and I think it's important that we all learn this stuff. Uh, so if you're, you've landed on this podcast, it's likely for a reason. And if you're like, what? Nothing resonates with you? Turn it off and go to a different podcast. That's okay with me. Um, I feel like oftentimes podcasts kind of get thrown into my life for a reason. And, uh, usually there's something in a podcast I'm meant to hear. And sometimes I don't even finish all the podcasts I listen to because I've, I hear the thing that I'm meant to hear and I move on from that. So perhaps that's an episode. This is an episode like that for you. Maybe not. Um, this episode is slightly different. Um, the whole idea behind my, my podcast was I wanted to do experiments on myself to see what I could open up with my third eye and then document it and share it with my listeners because I don't, it's not just about me. It's about everyone. Um, and so one of the things I've been experimenting with because I, through learning about my aphantasia and, and um, getting like violently opened up uh, through experience, um, like my spiritual my spirituality kind of opened up for me. Um, it was like everything's kind of connected, the aphantasia and the spirituality. It all kind of comes together, and I can't talk about one thing without talking about the other. That's what I'm getting at here. So I got distracted because my dog. Needs to come in. Come on. Nope, she doesn't want to. So this is going to be a tiny little message to introduce this podcast. So the podcast is me experimenting with channeling. So I've been doing experiments with myself channeling. Holy crap, my dog. I'm sorry. And you know what? I'm recording this just walking with my phone. You know, 1999 styles. I don't think we had cell phones in 1999. Who am I kidding? Come on. But I'm not even using headphones. That's just how I'm rolling right now, guys. So this podcast, I need to finish this thought. I'm experimenting with channeling. I've been experimenting with channeling for a few weeks now. And what I've been doing is I've been showering and then recording myself speak out loud while I shower. And instead... So when I'm in the shower, I usually get a stream of consciousness. I get all these downloads. I get all this information kind of dumped into my head. And then I often like get out of the shower and I completely forget. And I feel like those thoughts are almost like multi-layered. And I was trying to think, how can I get my messages out and like just one thing come out, you know? So I started doing this in the shower and I kind of like asked for my guides to help and whatever. And, uh... I try to set a scene in the shower, like I usually shower with the lights off, uh, so it's like dark and your eyes adjust very quickly to be able to see. And plus I have a window in my bathroom, it's not like super duper dark. I usually light a candle, I set a mood, uh, and then I start showering and I record the process and I talk and uh, lots of different things come out. I sometimes, my voice will sometimes change and I'll turn into someone else. Sometimes it's just me talking. Sometimes I burst out into song and I'll sing an entire song, um, you know, that I just randomly made up. And sometimes I sing very well, like I sing very nicely, which I don't think I typically sing very well. Um, And sometimes like my voice is just completely not my own. So it's very interesting. And I've been doing that a lot lately. (coughs) I'm sorry. I also realize that my cough is like a part of spirit coming through me. Um, so I've been doing this showering and I have like four or five channeling things that I've been meaning to post and I just like, I, I can't seem to get myself to do it. I just, I just don't know. It just feels, it makes me feel very vulnerable to like throw up something that, that I had no thought in creating Like when I was, the things I was saying, I was not thinking, I was just saying. So it's, it's so vulnerable and I'm just, I might post the shower ones eventually, but I'm not ready to throw up me singing on 
on the podcast yet, or at least, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Um, so today I tried a different form of channeling. I want to kind of tell you what I did before I get into it and you can decide if you want to leave or stay. And maybe this intro is all you need. Um, because maybe you want to try channeling. So what I did was I've been playing a lot with my tuning forks. I've been working with them with crystals a lot. And I feel like it's upped my vibration significantly. Significantly. Um, and so during this podcast, all I was doing was playing, like do, using my tuning fork and kind of putting it around my head, putting it on my forehead, putting it by my ear, putting it on top of the crown of my head, and like feeling the vibration. And then as soon as the vibration kind of died down, I feel like the message, like the... the 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 channeling kind of would die down a bit like it was harder to access I feel like I can access it even when I'm not using the tuning forks but with the tuning forks it comes in so much stronger and so much louder and clearer for me so anyways I was doing this tuning forks and I was just saying what was coming in and uh I don't know it was a cool experience and I just wanted to kind of share with that what this episode is um, I think that we probably all have the ability to do this, but I don't even know because in the podcast, I was like, do I need to share this? And they're like, yes, because most people don't actually have information dumped into their head like you do. And it's been given to you to share. Um, and if you are similar to me and you feel the same thing, like you have all this information that's been dumped into your head and you don't know what to do with it all. Hey, why don't you start a podcast or a blog or something else? I don't know, just throwing it out there. If you have a lot of wisdom, be wise, my friend, and share the, share share that wisdom, okay? Um, so without further ado, here is my podcast episode of me channeling. Oh, also, before we start, sorry, guys, I didn't write notes before doing this. Um, before we start, I also wanted to just mention that I have a new website. I think I mentioned it on my last podcast, but I'm like really working hard at this. It's called AfantasiaExperiments.com. I'm trying to write blogs and uh, offer some services because right now I'm kind of just doing this and experimenting and trying to learn and grow as much as possible. But I want to start like, you know, making a little bit of money uh, if I can. And I offer a couple meditation tracks on there. Uh, One thing that my kids really want to do, my son is like obsessed with trying to make money and I know that one day he's going to be a bazillionaire. So when he heard that I was starting to sell meditation tracks, he was like, can I make some? And I thought, you know what? That could be a good thing. Having kids actually read a meditation. So when a kid is listening to it, they hear kind of a voice that's similar to their own. So I'm working on those. It's not really anything to do with aphantasia, but... Uh, I, I'm so pro meditation for children, especially like sleep meditations and stuff. It can be really beneficial and helpful, especially with kids who have high anxiety or sleep disorders. Um, I think that it could, uh, be, be pretty awesome. So if you're interested in that, I have a, like a newsletter sign up thing. I have not done anything with it, but I'm gathering emails. So if you want to join the newsletter, so when I actually put stuff out there, and you want to know about it, you'll be able to, and I will try to get better at actually communicating with my listeners. Um, what else is on there? So I have the blog, and if you ever have any topics that you're like, ah, I wonder about this in Aphantasia, I will do some digging, I will do some research, and I will write a blog about it or do a podcast about it. So just email me and let me know. My email is rofocreative at gmail.com. That's R-O-F-O creative at gmail.com. Okay. Is that all? Hmm. The other thing is I do have a donate button on my website. If you want to donate anything goes a long way. Uh, It just helps me fund my research. There's a bunch of things that I want to try with sound healing and different things. And I'm just like, you know, you can't really buy things if you're not working and you can't really spend money on things and you can't really live in the society without some sort of uh, money coming in. So donations to fund my research and to help me get the word out there. Or if you're interested at all in sponsoring a podcast episode, 
let me know. I haven't gotten into marketing and stuff. I just want to get messages across. I am so not... I worked in marketing for 20 years and now I just like want so badly to not be a marketing person anymore. It is not who I am at a core. Um, so if you, if you like this podcast and want to share it with your friends, please help me market it because uh, I don't want to. Thank you. And uh, also like, subscribe and do all the things. And without further idea, adieu, adieu, adieu. Uh, I hope you enjoy this podcast of me. Trying to channel with my tune and forks. Oh, also, before I... If you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to listen to this message, this thing of Robin channeling. That's weird. There is a message for someone specifically in there. Most of it's channeling, but I asked for a spirit to come through for a podcast listener. So if you're from Colorado or if you know someone from Colorado, there was a message that came through. Name is probably Doug. Maybe not. Might be just dad. Um, but I get into that further into the podcast so just throwing that out there if you are that person don't give up here listen to the whole episode if you're not from Colorado or have no connection to Colorado or the California Raisins you don't have to listen to the whole thing but you know what you should listen there's probably a message in here for you guarantee it 100% hands down okay seriously starting the podcast now and don't make fun of me singing at the beginning that's how i bring spirit in they like singing okay you want to talk to spirit start singing okay okay also i'm just gonna keep going when i was a kid we used to play spirit in the glass and i still do this sometimes we would say is there a spirit in the glass is there a spirit in the glass and then you bring a spirit in the glass like ouija <clears throat> so in this i'm asking is there a spirit in the room and it worked brilliantly so if you're ever wanting to bring spirit in just uh, try this out and i'm out have a great day i hope you enjoy this podcast uh if it resonates with you at all please email me if uh yeah if you just want to chat if you want to uh tell me something exciting about avantasia or your development let me know open to channel I am 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 open to channel. Is there a spirit in the room? 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 Yes, it's not a spirit, it's a collective. We are not just one spirit, we are many spirits. Okay. Um Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there a message that you'd... One second, I gotta bring it up again. Is there a message that you'd like me to know? We are all carrying positive and negative energy. It's both... It's important both to use both positive and negative energy in every day. It is impossible to stay in a positive energy field for your entire day. And using up negative energy is an important thing to do. It is not only essential, it is beneficial to your well-being to dispense of negative energy as well as positive energy, creating an equal balance in life force within. Okay, so this positive affirmation stuff is that good or bad like should we be doing positive stuff like what's that about are we it is not about staying in a constant state of positivity it's about appreciating the positive moments and understanding the negative moments have their purpose as well it's a constant state of fluctuation and understanding that the negative moments impact your experience of the greater 
good in the good moments once you realize that the dark moments seem less difficult and misunderstood. Sorry, that was a hard one to get out. My vibration was losing there. Okay. What else do we want to ask? How important is it that we appreciate the bad moments? It's not about appreciating the bad moments. It's just about understanding the significance and the impact they have on the moments in your life that could seem unimportant or underappreciated. The dark moments make these lighter moments, these seemingly mundane moments seem more impactful. And every moment can be filled with joy depending on how you perceive the moment but negative things are part of our life you walk through a forest you're getting negative ions from the trees it's okay that's a positive thing it's a po it brings you positivity receiving those negative ions negative energy is not always doesn't always impact you in a negative way Oftentimes something bad will happen to someone and it'll help them turn a new leaf or change something about themselves. It doesn't always happen that way, but negativity is an important part of life. Positive mantras are not a bad thing. They're a good thing. They help your, your consciousness and your state of mind stay as elevated as possible. But even if you say all the mantras in the world, things will happen in your life that will seem hard at the time but will also help you elevate and grow and help your soul grow pain is something that happens before immense growth and it's unfortunately something that every human being has to endure for our growth understanding that the pain has purpose is fundamental in expansion Okay. Interesting, interesting, interesting. What else do we want to know? How can we talk directly to our loved ones and get a direct, like, access to them? How can we access them directly? The sky is an infinite cesspool of information. If you look at the sky at nighttime, if you look at the stars, or if you look at the clouds that go by, and you ask the questions, or talk to your loved ones, and seek questions, by looking at the sky you'll get your answer. Whether it be a cloud that shifts a certain way, or an image that pops up in the sky, or a star that flickers, the answer will always show up. It's how you interpret it that matters. But know if you have a feeling, a buzzing, a, a knowingness that your loved one is sharing information with you while you look at the sky, just understand that the information that has been provided to you is absolutely accurate and there is no judgment, there is no need to filter all the access, all the information. Oh, sorry, my I'm losing it there. I'm sorry, I lost it. I was stumbling at the end there. I got my words caught. I missed a couple of things there. Sorry, it's like I hear something come in and then I'm trying to say it and listen at the same time and I got something messed up and then I feel like my vibration just went down. What's it like? Is there any way to cut a soul family or do you have to continue with soul families 
throughout your existence. Like, will I always be with Kevin and Conan and, and Jim and, and my mom? And is that always going to be my destiny or is, or do the families change up? And do you skip souls? Like, do families go each time? How does that work? Sorry, I think I need a higher one. Ooh. Souls are often put together in the same, in same groupings, but they always play a different role. So one person who is an antagonist in your life in this lifetime will often come out as someone who is completely kind and nurturing to you in another lifetime. It's so that your souls can experience different types of personalities and grow and learn from those and to have different experiences with different characteristics. Your soul's growth is based on the experiences and the learning that you gain throughout your lifetimes. And if you can't experience the other side of someone's interaction, sorry, I'm losing it again. It's like a fucking antenna, I swear. Okay. So soul families often stay together. You don't have to be with the same soul in each lifetime, but you always meet up after you die. Even if one of the souls are still in this incarnation, time and space are completely different. Once you cross over, you are able to access anyone who's been alive or currently anyone who is alive or has been ever been alive. Lower vibrational beings who have not elevated significantly throughout their life their soul's journey will be lower in vibration but each lifetime you can go up the vibrational scale and you can live the same life but improve it So you can be the same person again and again in a life and just change the way you live it. There's so many multiple ways your soul can grow and part of it is the rebirth of the same person. Part of it is learning from the other experiences. You get that in your life review, but you can also choose to come back as a soul that was the other side of of the relationship that you are in. There's so many different ways that you can come back into this life as a new soul and it all depends on the growth that you want to accomplish. There are so many, there's infinite universes, infinite possibilities, infinite timelines, and your soul can go to infinite places. This one body is only one aspect of the multiple. Oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm losing it. Ooh, the high pitch ones really get it, I think. look in the mirror you need to ask yourself who are you who am I who are you at a soul level if you remove every experience that you've ever had in your life remove all the experiences remove the relationships who are you it's an impossible question to ask because the experiences we have in life are what define us as a person you can't remember who you are as a baby because you were a baby and had at birth you were you knew that you had infinite possibilities but you also completely forgot about 
in your history. And your ability to communicate. We're born with complete amnesia, but we're also born with the knowingness that we can have and be whatever we want by just crying out for it. When you age, you forget to cry out for things. You forget to ask for things. You forget to vocalize. We learn words, but we forget to express ourselves. Clearly. It's hard to say if this is valuable information to the masses. I'm not sure if I need to post this or not. Can you let me know if this is like, is this information just for me or am I supposed to put this on the podcast? It's like a weird thing to ask when I'm trying to channel it. But... The information you receive is not information that everyone receives. Sometimes you think that your mind is accessing something that everyone else's mind is accessing as well, and this information is incorrect. Most people are closed off to the information that is being provided to you. It is your duty to... Fuck. It's my duty to what? I don't know if I'm going to be able to ever do this without tuning forks. It is your duty to... It is your duty to speak the words that you're being guided to speak. You know that in your soul you're meant to be, you're meant to, oh my god, sorry guys, I'm saying sorry guys now because I'm assuming that I'm going to have to post this. You're being guided to speak the words, the truth. Don't hide away from it. Every time you speak your truth, you gain access to a higher consciousness and awareness. Consciousness. Peppermint schnapps. I don't know why that's coming in, but peppermint schnapps. Who doesn't like peppermint schnapps? I don't know if anyone likes peppermint schnapps. Okay, is there... Okay, if I'm going to put this up here for my podcast listeners, let me see if I can bring a spirit in that maybe a listener might feel connected to. I'm sorry, this is really annoying. Uh, The banging of my hammer to get my... (laughs) tuning forks going it's just what I have set up right now Um, okay I'm calling in any someone on the other side who's connected to a podcast listener if you want to get a message out okay I don't know if this will come across right, but I keep getting, okay, sorry. I keep getting California raisins and that California raisins were something that you watched as a child. And now every time you see Carrot California wine, I want you to know that uh, this sounds so stupid. (laughs) This is new to me, okay? Like getting a message from. Because it comes in like. The channeling's a bit different. It's like something comes over me, and then the trying to speak to someone is like I'm getting these words. So I'm getting California raisins, which for me is like. I used to watch it as a kid, so it brings me back to like things I watched as a kid. And these plasticine 
figures. That's what it brings me back to. And I don't know if that has any meaning to anyone out there or if it's like, is this just bringing you, like I said, a childhood memory? I'm, I'm very new to this. Okay, so I have California Raisins. And if this, if you're listening to this and you're like, this means something to me, please reach out because I don't, this is, I need validation for stuff like this. Um... So the California raisin I was getting, and then he, it's a he, he was saying, what were you saying, what do you want to say about the wine? That if you're having problems with wine, stick to the California raisins, the California grapes, I guess. And maybe that's what the whole message of the California Raisins was. Okay. Oh, sorry. I got Doug. Maybe this guy's name's Doug. Douglas. And then I got the words therapeutic elements. I need someone like constantly doing this in my ear because I feel like I, I need to figure out how to stay elevated for longer. I'm sorry. Okay, California grapes, California raisins. Doug, maybe? Is there a Doug? Is this Doug? Are you with me? Is this Doug? Okay. He said serendipitous behavior no serendipitous activity goes unnoticed. Basically saying wake up, wake the fuck up. I'm sending you signs, I'm sending you things. Uh, I feel like this Doug guy is like really strong. Is it is it Doug? I just I have like duh. Maybe it's Dad. I just I really want a name because I feel like a, um. Oh, is it Doug? <laughs> like really try to get high up. Well, maybe if I do it like right in my ear. Okay, I got Denver. So maybe you're from Denver, Colorado. Doug. Okay, maybe it's your dad's name is Doug. And you are having trouble with wine. Or, and or, this is my interpretation because I'm not giving me much more about this. He get okay. He's got like Harrison Ford vibes. He says that people used to say that he looked like Harrison Ford or like gave off. Harrison Ford is like a big thing. So if I don't, if Doug is wrong, Harrison Ford is right. Okay. Because I just, like, I heard Doug, and now I can't get Doug out of my mind, so I'm, like, trying to erase that. But maybe there's a Doug in there. I just don't feel like it, his name is Doug, but I feel like there's a Doug somewhere. Maybe there's a Doug brother or a Doug dog, even. oak oak tree a connection to an oak tree pay attention to oak trees that their leaves are waving to you essentially specifically oak like it's specific and i don't know the difference literally i don't know so just pay attention to oak trees i guess Fair child.
Fairchild. I don't know what that means. Fairchild. I don't know what it means. That's what I keep getting. Fairchild. I don't know, maybe. Oh gosh, maybe as a kid you said that's not fair or something. Maybe that's like something he's bringing up. Maybe you're in a similar situation where your kid is going through that. My kids are always doing that. And, you know, it might be coming up for me. Again, this is new to me. I'm just bringing in whatever comes into my head. Okay, I'm going to just take a break because I feel like I need to put my arms down. I feel like that's taking a lot of energy out of me. I'm going to just, I'm going to say goodbye to Doug. If, if Doug, it's probably not Doug again. I got like, duh, it might be Dan. It might just stand for dad. If you have any relation to someone, I think in Colorado, who you have some relation to with the California Raisins, you let me know. Um, I hope that message got through to you. I am just sitting here. So what I did was I set up a table in my basement. I've been getting a lot of messages coming through and I thought I would try to do it in more like, like an actual environment. So I set up my table. I put some crystals down. I lit my candle. I have my tuning forks going and I thought I'd just record what I would get in. I try to ask questions and I just see what kind of comes to me and through me because I don't know the answers to any of this stuff. And uh, it used to feel like I was just making it up, but some stuff I feel like, I, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel made up. It feels like I don't know where it's coming from. Like I never know what I'm going to say next. So it's really cool and I definitely feel like that being able to access that side where it kind of just comes like that it's a lot easier when I'm using the tuning forks especially the higher frequency it's like it raises my frequency to be in a frequency where I can channel easier um I feel like this this state kind of comes to me in the shower too and I don't know if it's the water that helps me access that um but the tuning forks are definitely helpful in getting me to channel and to access um spirit so um yeah I'm gonna try now I just took a little break there uh I'm gonna try again to and this is like really if I put this out there and I know it kind of told me I had to um this is very vulnerable for me I'm not this is not uh it's just difficult you know difficult to put yourself out there even if you feel like it's important to do so there's like so much stuff that comes in for me daily about the way the universe works and the way um we're supposed to live and how we're not really living in alignment currently and how we can shift that as a humanity and I, I always think to myself like oh I wonder how many other people are getting this information kind of dumped into their head it feels like dumped. It feels like it's a garbage truck kind of dumping its infinite wisdom into me, which is awesome. I should use a better a better visual than a dump truck, but if you're listening to my podcast, you probably uh, can't visualize, so who cares? Um, a dump truck. What, what else could dump something? Dump something positive, like a cloud raining joy and wisdom? It's not always joy too. Like I get, I get darker messages too. It's but it's more about understanding the dark entities, dark darkness in our lives, and about making the connections to how the dark times in our lives affect us in a positive way in the long run, or in the long run at, at a soul level. You know how much you grow at, as a soul after traumatic things. It uh, it's it's a shitty thing, but it's a part of life, and it's a part of our growth here I have been really connecting to crystals lately I I love I've always loved the look of crystals and I but 
I've been using them with my tuning forks lately and I feel like now they are extra charged. It's like I had this whole dream about starting a crystal, uh, not a store, but like a charging station, charging place where people could come get their crystals charged and also come for like a Reiki treatment with crystals because I think combining the two with sound healing with the tuning forks, holy cannoli, it's good. It feels so good. And these crystals, I feel like we all, everyone, any woo-woo, I hate using the word woo-woo, but like anyone out there who's, who's into this stuff, we get these crystals and then we don't really know what to do with them. And uh, that was me. I mean, I, I, I'll carry one around and rub it and I feel like it kind of calms me down when I need to, but I don't really know how to use it and, and have it have powers or whatever. And something about these tuning forks and I don't really know anything about it. I've just been doing it intuitively. Um, when I put the tuning fork on the crystal and press it against my skin, it feels like it amplifies it. And it feel it like it amplifies the vibrational sensation on me. And it feels like it sends a calming impulse throughout my entire body, which is very incredible. <laughs>